your video. Okay, so welcome folks. Welcome to uh, this, there we have two sessions. The first session is going to be sort of the basics and the sort of the understanding as to how this idea of going from, uh, from an idea, a task, a concept, something that you'd like to accomplish to realize it in such a fashion that it's going to be really easier in order to get to that point. So we have two sessions today, this one and then one immediately afterwards. During this one, we're gonna to present to you those basic concepts of what is project management or what, how do we plan for these kinds of things? How do we plan to accomplish the, these initiatives? And so Denise is gonna go through that. That'll take up the first session. After that, we're going to give you some examples of how it may be applied in some of the tools that we have available to us at PSU. So uh, if uh, we're gonna, we'll tag team, Lisa and, and, and Denise are all presenters with, uh, with, uh, with myself in this. And we'll, uh, we will tag team and if you, there'll, there'll be many opportunities for questions. And thank you so much for your attendance. And Denise, all set. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, so I'm Denise Hutchins, for those of you who don't know me. So I teach in the marketing and communication programs. And um, I have been doing project management for many years now. And so whether it's been information technology projects, website development, or events, which is one of the classes I teach. So I do it in different capacities um, in terms of kind of a project manager. And then now in terms of being a professor and helping my students um, through that. So that's a little bit of my background. And then Lisa, if I can throw it to you. Sure, thanks Denise. So I came to the BAU about a year ago. Um, I retired after 30 years in public education, most recently as a high school principal. Um, I used a tool very similar to Planner as a principal, and um, I think there are some great administrative advantages to using a planning tool. So I'll share a few of those uh, in the next session. And, and I'm Scott Manti, and I have done, I've used uh, many, many planning tools, uh, some very, very sophisticated, some very simple. And it's the whole idea of trying to find the right tool for the right set of tasks and what your comfort level is. I've actually used planning tools to build a $12 million school of education, starting with the case statement all the way to how the opening will go using simply one tool. So there's lots of opportunities and lots of, lots of potential ways that you can use this. Thank you, Denise. So let's just jump in and obviously we're running through this quickly. So this is gonna be a very high level sort of big picture and just get some pieces out there. And then I'm hoping we might have some time for discussion afterwards, but really what is project management? And it really simply is just the management of a project, right? And the, of course, then we have to ask, well, what is basically a project? And it's a list of tasks that need to be performed by certain resources within a very specific time frame. So. These tasks tend to have a lot of dependencies on each other in order to meet your goals. So if something slips, you're going to have some trouble hitting those. Uh, we have that time frame, right? So we need to have those deadlines to meet um, in order to hit those goals. And we want to have those SMART goals, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. And then, of course, we also have resources. So we have to think about the people we need, the equipment, the materials that we're going to need in order to make this project possible. So something I always like to keep in mind is nothing's going to be perfect, right? And so you could kind of sit there and not be able to move yourself forward, right? And so kind of analysis by paralysis. And I'm just like, oh, so I always keep in mind, like a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. And so thinking about that often, telling my teammates, my, you know, my coworkers, the people I'm working with, like, you know, we got to keep moving it forward. And sometimes it can be a little bit scary. And so we have to kind of keep that in mind. So just something to sort of always tuck in the back of your head. So some things that we need to consider, right? There's a lot of things we need to consider in the planning process, but some things is ultimately like, what is the goal, right? What are we trying to accomplish here? Um, what is gonna be a satisfactory goal for people um, when this project is completed? 
And so really understanding that and, and really making sure that everyone's on board with that is important. And then thinking of the scope of work, right? So what is the scope of work, right? We can bite off way more than we can chew, I'm sure. And that tends to happen in projects. And so we have to think about what's manageable and we might even consider phasing that work, right? So we might have different phases where it's like, okay, we're gonna keep this discrete and then that'll be phase one and then we can move it to phase two. And so being clear about those kinds of things, what's in scope, what's out of scope really is important to your success. And then of course the constraints. So what kinds of issues might we have, right? Um, in our world, a lot of it comes down to semester timing, right? That we only have a certain amount of time in a semester to get something accomplished, right? And so that can be a constraint for us. Of course, budgetary constraints, right? Definitely come into play. So, you know, understanding what those constraints are is part of this entire process. And sometimes, you know, those might be very clear and then sometimes they might become a little bit more clear as we move forward. And then also like what are those dependencies, right? So what do we have to have happen in order for other things to happen and how much are they hinged on each other? And so again, understanding what those are, planning for them and making sure that those are the things that cannot slip or we're gonna have a real problem, uh, you know, coming to the end of our project. And also considering our client, right? So who is it that we're serving? Sometimes I think, especially in higher education we might have many clients right, that we're serving, you know, but primarily who are the people that says, this is the big picture, this is the goal, this is what we need to do. So we need to be very clear about that in terms of keeping our eye on that. Obviously knowing our stakeholders is really important too um, and keeping that in mind, but we ultimately have to say, this is the person that we are answering to and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And of course our team is really important. Right, so we have to have the right people in the right seats on the team. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, who might be our team. And so we need to have a project champion, right? So somebody, we sometimes might call it a project sponsor, but this is somebody at a very high level. So maybe in, a, in our case, maybe it's the provost, maybe it is a board of trustee member, but there is a champion who is helping us along the way and making sure that we get the resources that we need, that we have the right people on the team, right? And making sure that they're clearing a, a pathway for us to be successful. And we'll talk a little bit about that too, because it is so important. Um, obviously the project manager, again, is a really important person and maybe you're lucky enough to have a few, which would be great. Um, and then our core team, right? So we have a core um, of individuals who are really working on this project day in and day out to make it successful. And so we wanna make sure that we're thinking about them, but then there's also probably a whole host of other people who we might have access to. And so that might, they might be outside consultants to us and to the work that we're doing. Maybe they are collaborators with us or across campus in our case. Um, maybe they just come into the actual project launch piece where they're thinking about um, helping us brainstorm some different solutions or some possibilities or some user needs, right? So there's all these kinds of things that can happen and take place as we're scoping out our project. And then of course, we need our knowledge experts, right? So who are our subject matter experts who we need to dip in and dip out of um, on a regular basis and call to us to help when we need them? And so, you know, we have our smaller team, but then we also have a larger team. And so knowing when to call on these people, um, when to utilize them and bringing them in for buy-in is really important as well. So here's six simple steps of a project, right? So, um, you know, it sounds really simple. And to some extent, you know, it is, but in a lot of cases too, these, con these projects can be very complex. We could be talking, you know, multi-year projects which I've been involved with, and we could be talking maybe just semester long or maybe year. So, you know, it's gonna vary, but the big piece is, is that you really need to define that project and, you know, crystallize it down. So what is it that we're really trying to accomplish? What is it that we really wanna do? Making sure we nail our goal, making sure people buy into that goal, right? Um, and that we're all in terms of time frame and things like this is what we're gonna do. And then of course we need to plan it out, which is where you're gonna spend a fair amount of time in the beginning. Like what's that look like, right? Um, and making sure that we really think about planning out. And this is where some of the software tools that we're gonna talk about a little bit later can come in handy 
um, while we're doing that. And then number three is the execution piece. This is where we're going to spend probably the most amount of our time, right? Making sure that we are executing, that we are firing on all cylinders, that um, our project champion is helping us move some obstacles out of the way. If there are some, we need to be monitoring what's going on and sort of adjusting as things happen, right? Things do happen. As we know, the pandemic happened and it's throwing a lot of projects off, things that we were planning to do. And so we have to think about, you know, how do we kind of readjust and keep moving? Then we need to complete our project, of course, um, and finish that. And there is a lot to that as well, which I'm not going to get into. But the idea is, you know, you're going to evaluate, you're going to see where you were successful, maybe see where, you know, there were some failures. And of course, we all know that we can learn a lot from those. And then, of course, also, too, is the idea of we get to celebrate. Right. And I think that that's an important part of the project process is the celebration. And so I'm going to, again, mention that a couple more times because I do think that's really important and sometimes overlooked, especially on those who have their eye on project completion, right, and what that really looks like. So the launch of the project is crucial, right, it's making sure that that champion, that person is out there and really sort of sets the tone, right, from a very big picture, we have our vision, Right, they're setting the stage, they're working to send the right message and they're working on ways that we can all succeed. And so we wanna make sure that we are very much a part of that, that we're sort of driving it, but it is important to have that figurehead there uh, to help kind of you know, get things rolling in the right direction. We do wanna communicate our purpose. What, what is the project purpose? Why are we doing this, right? And what are the goals? And sometimes it might not be, you know, um, super easy for people to see, right? That, you know, we have competing priorities sometimes. And so, you know, we have to really make sure that we're getting that purpose and the why and those goals out there. And then clearly, again, illustrating what's that scope of work, right? Because a lot of people have great ideas and they want to kind of put their ideas in as you're maybe finishing out that planning process. And so this is where the phased approach or thinking about scope is very important. So that's like, that's a great idea. And once we're launched, then we, we're going to move into the next phase, which is where we could maybe think about some of these things. So kind of setting the parameters for people, I think is really helpful in that scope of work. And then giving that clear timeline, right? So people know what to expect, um, you know, and making sure that it's realistic, right? So we don't want to be uh, making it unrealistic. Um, so, you know, you got to kind of ride that fine line, but making sure people understand that timeline, like it will take us a year to accomplish this, right? To be upfront about those kinds of things. And then making sure that there's a clear discussion on resources, right? So who is involved in the project, right? How much money do we have allocated to this? Um, what's the priority of this project, right? Which should I'll give people some idea of like, hey, I need some leeway. I need a couple more people maybe from your team to help, right? So again, that person painting the picture is really going to help with that. And then, of course, talking about what are the deliverables? So what happens um, during this process, during the project? And then what do we get out of it in the end, if that's not uh, super clear? We want to make sure that it is. So this project launch is, is really crucial to say that we get off on the right foot. We set the stage, people understand the big picture, they are buying into the process and what we're looking to do and why it's really necessary. And then I just wanna offer you some tips. So some things that you know I've spent a lot of time um, thinking about and sort of what that really looks like. So my background is in communication. And so I am a huge advocate in communicating often. Right, so weekly updates are really important with not only your project champion and your core team, but maybe even the broader team. And it might not be something you're doing on a regular basis overall, maybe across campus, but maybe on a monthly basis, you decide that that might be something that might um, be necessary. And then over communicate, because sometimes when you are leading the project and you're in the thick of things, it's very makes a lot of sense to you, right? You're living it, you're breathing it every day. And so sometimes we have to make that extra effort to be clear that everyone understands what we're trying to do. And so over communicating, I think is another a good idea for us. And then documenting early and often. So documentation is really important. So you have a lot of um, 
you know, things in the air, a lot of balls that you're kind of juggling, maybe a lot of different consultants, right? And so documenting not only from kind of a user perspective in terms of maybe eventually having some guides and things to help people, but also just making sure that every meeting is documented and people know what the outcomes are, what are the action items. And so some of that software can help with us, um, help us do that as well. And then I always say, people say, what's project management? And I always say, it's follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. I spend more time just following up with people, right? And I'm not necessarily, and I see some head nods, right? Like I'm not necessarily doing the work myself, right, all the time, but I am following up that things aren't slipping. People have what they need to get the job done, right? That we're not um, in jeopardy in any, any time. And, you know, and these things pop up. So we have to be careful about that. So I spend a lot of time really just following up students too. I spend a lot of time in my project classes following up with them. And then of course, collaborating. So that's really important. You know, we don't really get anywhere on our own. And so it's important that we reach out to our team members or, you know, maybe people who aren't even on the team. And then we realize like, wow, you know, this, we sort of underestimated this. We really should be collaborating with this group. And so I think that that's important and really leads to this idea of getting the right people involved. And so figuring out who those people are, spending a lot of time in that stakeholder piece and really making sure that, you know, we've asked the right people. Um, and there isn't gonna be some, you know, gotcha um, department that comes out of the side that we just didn't really think about yet. They are a major um, sort of user of whatever it is that we're doing or kind of a, you know, recipient of this project. So we need to make sure that we do that. And then really be keen in terms of a problem solver. Um, and well, a spotter, and then of course a solver, right? So we wanna make sure that we're sort of looking around those corners and see what might be lurking or what's changing in the industry that might be a problem for us um, that maybe we didn't see in the outset. And again, if this isn't a multi-year project, that could happen, right? Something could come out um, of the woodwork that we didn't necessarily think about or know about at the time. Also knowing when to raise the flag, right? It's like, wow. Um, I, I think we're having some trouble here. We're going to need some help. And so knowing when to do that, I think is an important part of managing projects and being aware of scope creep, right? Again, a lot of people might see value in it. They might say, wow, and if we could just do this, and if we can add this one more thing, and how about this? And it's like, great ideas. We'll think about that come our next, you know, phase. And so that's important to do too, is kind of put the hold on these kinds of things. And I say, lastly, for my tips is really just to under promise and over deliver. I think that that's an important part of what we need to do. Um, so we really want to make sure that we can hold up our end of the bargain. We don't want to over promise um, because probably not much good will come of that. So it works better the other way if we can exceed those expectations. And I promised you a little bit about the celebration, and I do think that this is really important. And yet, something that doesn't happen, and I know I've even been. Um, sort of part of that where, you know, I'm like, no, we haven't hit our end goal. We haven't hit our end goal. And it's like, well, stop, right? Because we can have small successes along the way that we should stop and appreciate. So I would urge you not to wait until the end, right? Just kind of stop and celebrate a bit, smell the roses here and there. Um, do it early and often when we can, right? And I think that that really helps keep people motivated to keep on working because projects can be a grind. And so, you know, keeping people focused and letting them know like, hey, you're doing such a great job, you're doing things right. And I don't mean always necessarily like, hey, we're gonna have a party, right? It could just be, I'm gonna write you a nice thank you note. Like you've done an awesome job and I really appreciate the work you're doing. And just little things here and there, I think can really help, you know, kind of move things along and keep people focused. And so our last, slide that really leads into the next session, but just kind of getting you thinking a little bit about it, um, is that, you know, we can use software, of course, and it could be something super simple like uh, Microsoft Excel, right? And so just keeping track of our tasks, and we can do a lot with that to an extent. We could consider Teams, right, that I use in some of my classes um, that we use, you know, I know some of you use it across the campus, and of course, the planner that um, works well with teams, and we're going to talk about some of those. There is Microsoft Project as well, so that's a much bigger tool for many um, complicated projects, and it is something that we can gain access to at Plymouth State with a fee, so it's just something to consider if you are running some major projects. But software in general really is just going to help you with tasks and deadlines, kind of allowing for collaboration, 
um, keeping people in the know and then letting people jump in quickly. So if something happens, right, you can jump in and see where things are at, right? Because we know a lot of things can happen, right? We've seen that over the last year. And so being able to pick up the pieces I think is important. So I know that I have thrown a ton at you. I'm sorry, because I'm talking so quickly, um, but I wanted to open it up and one, either for questions, which I haven't been monitoring the chat and or if you're thinking about starting a project, um, you wanna kind of talk a little bit about that. Maybe you have a challenge that you're facing in a current project that you're running. Maybe it's something about a student project or maybe it's just about the software we're gonna get into. Any and all of those things I welcome and Scott and Lisa do as well. So um, I'm gonna stop talking and just kind of open it up for you guys. And I'll actually stop sharing as well. That'll help too. There's a, a question in chat. What are the common pitfalls or barriers in project management that you guys have experienced? Yeah, so I mean, for me, I think it's, you know, not having complete buy in right or not having the right stakeholders at the table to um, kind of create the project from the beginning, I think can be definitely a problem or not allocating the right amount of resources to the project. Um, and so, you know, if you don't set the stage properly in the beginning, I think it's hard to be successful. And so I would really urge you to, if you are asked to be the project manager in a certain piece, make sure that you have what you think you need to get the job done. And I think it's a good leverage point too. So if you want me to you know, manage this major project for three years, I wanna have this, 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 and this in order to make sure that it's gonna happen and be successful. I think, Scott, were you gonna add something? Yeah, so, so I, the, the big issue that I have found is project creep. And that is, um, you'll come up with this one project and you will, you will spiral everything off of this one element as opposed to think in terms of what are the discrete tasks that have to go on and be accomplished in order to make this happen. It's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, in, implement this curriculum. Well, there's all kinds, as you know, there are all kinds of components to that. Or, you know, we're going to, you know, change how our rooms are set up, or we're gonna change how we interact. There are many, many components. And so if anything, it is better to think in terms of how do we more discreetly break this one big task, problem, circumstance, planning situation up into these smaller ones, and then think in terms of who to assign them to. Yeah. Making it manageable is really key. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes that's the trouble with starting a project it's just, just so much, it's like, ah, you know, ahead of you. It's like, how do I do this? How do I break it down? Um, so it is manageable and I can chunk it out. Other questions or anyone have a project that they're sort of challenged with? Yeah. So yeah, Becky, that's a good question. So when is it scope creep and when is it legit to add something because you drew it too small to start with? Yeah, I mean, that obviously can happen. Um, and so I think, you know, if you feel that it's not gonna throw the rest of the project off and if you actually have the resources to accomplish this other piece, sometimes it does make sense and you sort of bite the bullet and say, you know, you know what, you're right. We didn't really plan for that. Um, we probably should have and we should move it up. And so maybe it's a swap out of something else that is in the project that you're like, yeah, we could probably move that to phase two and let's take this other piece that we just didn't know about or think about and put it into phase one. So I think that that is a good, good comment. Yeah, it's, all, it's always easier to add more tasks than it is to collectively pull tasks together. And sometimes you find out that you have these discrete tasks that you've now done in the past 10 minutes, right? But the beauty of it is that you, it, through the, like for example, some of the software that we'll show in just a moment, you can track it and it collects it all in one place. And that's part of the real advantages of some of the software rather than having everybody, it, you know, so for example, we send things into Google Docs or things along those lines or Teams, that's wonderful, but you still have to search your way through. Using some of the software enables you in one location to collect, attach files, see the schedule, see who, it's, who the teammates are, team members are, and be able to understand where are you in the process of accomplishing this. 
Mm -hmm. And let's see, Leslie is asking a good question about how do you differentiate between kind of project and program management when a project is program based. So it's a good question. I think, you know, projects in general are something that are not happening all the time. So if you find it to be part of your normal daily work, right, that this is what I do as part of, you know, my kind of my job, then I would say that that really would be more program based that this is, you know, what you're doing, if it has a discrete start and end date. And if it's something that is, um, you know, happening for the first time, then I would consider it more project based as opposed to just being part of something I do um, in what I manage on a regular basis. And, and I would say that's, it's kind of like a debate of semantics. So uh, try it. Try to try to work with a with a project or with a a program. Just just try it in terms of does this is what we're doing helping us from an organizational standpoint to accomplish what the mission or goals are of what we intended. And there's a learn there's going to be a learning process no matter what goes on, and you're going to find out what that that harmonic is for you, what that application is for you, what. What, when you can use this and when you can't use this. And the more you do that, the better you'll come to understand what your needs are. Mm -hmm. One of those things, try it, you may like it, that thing. Yeah, and that project you know, that you take on for the first time might become just part of your program overall, right? So you do it for the first time where you've you know, created it, established it, and then it just kind of rolls into be part of your program on a regular basis. So hopefully that is helping to answer your question. Um, and Patty is writing about, um, you know, your communication comment. What are your thoughts about around organizational change management? Yes, and that is a big, you know, project, right? When we want to, and, and we all know at Plymouth State, we've been going through this organizational change management, I think probably since I arrived about six years ago. Um, I would say, and again, that is a major project and a major undertaking, uh, which calls on a lot of stakeholders. And so, you know, it's really just talking um, and finding out how we all get on the same page, creating that vision, but it's being shared vision, I think is really important to kind of help building that. And that's what's difficult to get at. And it's also difficult when maybe there isn't a specific person assigned to um, you know, kind of run that project, you know, if, if it's part, everyone's trying to do it, right, it, it's like not getting the priority that it probably really needs. And so I think, you know, you got to kind of think about that too, and resources. Um, and, you know, when you talk about organizational change management, you're also talking a lot about culture. And culture is something that takes a long time to, um, to change. And also there's a lot of trust factors. And so it's, it's very multi-layered and that's probably one of the most difficult, I would say, um, types of projects to lead. Yeah. I think, I think Jonathan brings up a great point inside of the chat about it, it, this application, but there is also the application organizationally of knowing what it can't do or when not to do that or when not to take on other components. It's not meant to be a simple solution looking for problems to solve. It's meant to be a tool, a way of a methodology, if you will, of getting to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's up to the project manager to say, you know, I, I think it's a great idea, but unfortunately we just can't take it on right now but it is something that we could do, you know, further down the road. So I think, you know, again, you gotta uh, make sure that you're being really careful about that project so that you can hit your goals. Um, and so, and again, you're not gonna win everybody over, right? And we're not gonna make everybody happy, um, but ultimately there's a goal to be met, a job to be done, a project to be finished. And so we have to sort of, you know, kind of walk that line. I'm going to suggest as you guys move to the second portion of your presentation today that we stop the recording and then start again, just so we have these in discrete chunks sure. for people who are looking for them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Um,